I'm here with uh, Ian Waits, uh, author and founder of Newcon Press. Uh, he is here um, launching his new book, Palkins Comet. Uh, Ian, could you tell us just a little bit about uh, Palkins Comet? By all means, yes. Um, it's a space opera, um, which is something I've written in before. I've written two books for Solaris called The Noise Books, which were space opera. But this is very different. It's setting um, a, a new world, a completely new mi uh, milieu. Basically, what I've done, I've mined a familiar science fiction trope, the idea of um, th this is set at an age of expansion, and the idea that humanity is going to the stars, bootstrapping um, themselves using caches of um, alien technology, uh, leftover elder tech, which is a fairly familiar theme, it's been used in SF before. But what I'm trying to do through this um, book and its sequels, it's the first in a series called The Dark Angels, is take that trope, play around with it and turn it on its head. The, it, it's something you're quite fond of with your, your protagonists in your books is, is the, where they get thrown in out of their depth or find themselves really in over their heads. Um, that, that's something you have a lot of fun with? Oh, very much so. I mean, anything you write, be it science fiction or fantasy, the most important thing is character. If, if you can't produce a character that your reader engages with and wants to follow and wants to um, learn what happens next to that character, then you've lost half the battle straight away. And if you put a, um, a character in a situation where they're out of their comfort zone, where circumstances are threatening them or are taking them beyond their um, experience, then you're producing certain tensions. And yeah, it, it can be fun to write. <laughs> yeah. uh, in many ways, I suppose that could be almost a, a reflection of, of yourself because uh, you, you have the unusual um, situation where you, you run both a, a publishing imprint and, and are an author, both of which are full-time jobs. Uh, do, you, <laughs> do you find that ever conflicts one against the other? Or I, I don't know? find it conflicts. I, mean, I, I regard myself primarily as an author. That's what I like doing. That's what I set out to do. And New Compress, which to my huge shock, and when I look back now, it, it, it's 10 years old next year, which comes as an enormous... Um, I really do have to take a step back looking at that. That happened almost by accident. I still regard it almost as a hobby in a sense because at the end of the day Newcon is pretty much me publishing books I would like to read yeah. and stories I'd like to read and that's what I do with Newcon. But yes, you're right, it's taken over an enormous chunk of my life. Um, I probably spend as much time doing Newcon as I do the writing, it, it, in some instances more because um, I'll have projects going on which mean that the writing gets sidelined, which was never the idea and it's never the way things set out. Yeah. And it does mean that I've put in some fairly long hours sometimes, but mm. it doesn't feel like long hours because I love doing it. Yeah. And, and I can't pretend I love all the aspects of, of running New Compress when you have to do a line edit and go through things. And Something as simple as you've got a short story collection and the author has written some for the British market, some for the American. So they've used double inverted commas for speech in some, single in others. And in a book I want that to be rationalised. So I go through line by line and change them all to rationalise it. That side of things, that's not fun. But the end product, when you see it, and it's all nice and neat and everything is progressing through without any sudden abrupt changes. You know, you go for one story and it swaps and you notice it. The reader subconsciously picks up on it. So you need that continuity. And that element isn't fun, but the result is. And most of the time, I'm reading stuff for Newcon. And I'm lucky enough to work with some fantastic, really well-known established authors, but also some great new emerging talent. And both those things can be a great thrill. I mean, I've published people like... Christopher Priest, Neil Gaiman, Brian Aldiss, Tanith Lee. Yeah. And these are people I grew up loving and idolising. Actually, not Neil, because he's newer, but you know, I, 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 his work I, I really, really love. And to think that I've published them, I've worked with these people, is phenomenal. But equally, alongside them, I've published um, work by emerging authors like Kim Lakin Smith and Nina Allen and others who are debut authors. And to just be able to give some of these authors a window and to, I don't know, to just say to the public, look, Alongside these authors, you know, try this one, try that one. And that's a huge thrill as well. So I love that side of it, but it was never intended to be what it's become. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The, um, it's, it's quite an honour as well with Newcon, um, Newcon Press, because it's come a long way, uh, <laughs> considering where you started to where you are now. Um, and this year you have three authors uh, on the shortlist for the BSFA, the British Science Fiction um, Association Awards, which is quite an honour. Um, how do you... Feel about that. Oh, I'm, I'm knocked out by that. I mean, all, all three of them, I'm, I'm two, two are in the novel category, one in the short story. And the two novels in particular, they're both novels. I mean, I, year before last, I was one of the judges for the Arthur C. Clarke Award, 
I suppose last year, um, time flies, um, I was one of the judges for the LC Clark Award and I had to read 121 novels that were submitted um, for the shortlist and basically it was pretty much all the science fiction novels published in the UK in that year and having read all those to then publish two novels which to my mind are the equal if not the better of, of things on that list and I don't understand sometimes why I'm lucky enough to get these and why they weren't picked up by major publishers but I think perhaps when a major publisher is looking at a book they have to look at the various factors and one of the factors is how am I going to market this book, how am I going to sell it and I think both in the case of um, Nina Allen's The Race which is one of the novels shortlisted and Neil Williamson's The Moon King which is the other one which are both brilliant novels but I think they're outside of the norm, they take a sidestep from the accepted tropes, the accepted streams of science fiction and fantasy and they give something a little bit different yeah. and I think a major publisher wise looking at that and saying that's a great book they might not always know quite what to do with it whereas me one man band small publisher I don't have that problem I just look and say wow that's a great book I want to publish that so I'm very fortunate with those two and, and the other story you're talking about which is from Ruth Booth um, Ruth actually submitted that for a different anthology the year before and I didn't think it was quite right for that anthology, so I sent it back to her and suggested one or two changes. I said, look, if you do this, you do that. I've got another book coming out I think this would be suitable for. And Ruth took three, four months, rewrote the story um, very much. Very, I mean, it, I think that's a great thing as well, because for an author to be told, I want you to rewrite this, sometimes they can get up a tea and say, hang on, this is my story, that's how I want it. Yeah. But she went back, she took everything I said on board, rewrote the story, it came out, it's a great little story, it's one of those hidden gems that's hidden away in a book with other names in there, perhaps Ruth wasn't the biggest name in the book, but clearly people have read it, they have related to it, they've liked it, and yes, as you say, it's on the short list for the award and I couldn't be more thrilled for it. It's a lovely story, and um, yes, new compressed three things on the, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite something. Yeah. But yes, um, so Okay, well, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure My speaking pleasure. with you, and uh, good luck with uh, both the, the, the law. While well, you've had the launch already, good luck with uh, promoting the book, and um, and also with the awards. Uh, thank you. Hopefully, <laughs> some winners in amongst there. Well, we'll keep fingers crossed. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks again to Ian Waits for speaking to us. Uh, I'm Rob Malone on behalf of the Sci-Fi Fantasy Network. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. <laughs>